More companies will get the help they need to protect sensitive data. That's with the Infocom Media Development Authority committing to cover up to 50% of the cost for adopting new privacy-enhancing technologies. The tech called PETs allows businesses, big and small, to work together and share information securely without exposing private details. Now, nine firms have used IMDA's Sandbox to innovate securely so far, and Nasha Rahim speaks to one of them. This Japanese firm wants to take real estate construction and engineering to the next level. In this room, they're gathering and studying biometric data from employees to build better spaces for them. To ensure no personal information is shared, they're using privacy-enhancing technologies. Some of the data that we collect in this building specifically would be using AI cameras to track people's movement in spaces. We don't want to do anything that might compromise the trust that they've given to us. So by using a pet, right, the idea is that can we sufficiently mask the data that we're collecting so that it no longer has the attributes of personal data, however, still being able to provide us with the valuable insights that we can use to make us better designers of spaces. Privacy-enhancing technologies were used in industries that dealt with highly sensitive data, like healthcare or banking. But with growing data privacy concerns and advanced technology, any firm can use it to analyze and anonymize facts and figures. It's also a game changer to develop smarter artificial intelligence while keeping personal and commercial information safe. At the Personal Data Protection Week, the Infocom Media Development Authority shared that this technology enables data sharing across borders. They are also working with global firms to help businesses adopt it. One analyst says this is an opportunity for the data science industry to grow further. There is a need for those that currently are managing data to, to acquire those skills um, to, be, to be more privacy preserving in the way um, they use data. Um, so that's definitely something that will require more skills um, because we're talking about new technologies, new techniques, and those needs to be um, yeah, incorporated into the current knowledge base of companies and also obviously of the professionals. He also adds that smaller companies would have to build capabilities to support privacy-enhancing technologies. That's why a new guide was launched to help them through the implementation process from start to end. And for more, we speak to Denise Wong, who is a Deputy Commissioner for the Personal Data Protection Commission. Denise, thanks for coming into the studio today. Now, first of all, let's start with how has the data landscape in Singapore changed uh, in the last few years? What sort of new challenges are emerging? Well, the Personal Data Protection Act and my office, the PDPC, has been around for more than 10 years. And we've always had the mandate of protecting uh, the public's personal data. Um, uh, the public and people have, they should know how their data is being used and collected um, and to prevent uh, the misuse of that data. Uh, but we are now in the age of AI and of course data undergirds um, the training of AI. We had more than 1,500 people at the PDP week this year. I think that just underscores the importance um, of data. We aim to create a trusted ecosystem, one that is based on trust. Um, and we do that by working very closely with companies, um, offering them tools and a safe environment to trial their applications, use data, implement technologies such as privacy and hunting technologies or PETs um, in order to be able to harness the insights from data while still protecting the personal information and privacy of individuals. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are some of the new challenges that are emerging when it comes to both companies and also for personal use? Well, I, we know that personal information is important and should be protected. But at the same time, companies need to use these data sets and they need to extract insights from them. So in the privacy enhancing technology sandbox, the PET sandbox, uh, we had different companies who were coming in, putting in their use cases, and they were um, applying different pet techniques to their use cases in order to extract 
uh, insights from the data. Uh, learning from that and uh, sh wanting to share the insights, we launched a privacy enhancing technologies guides. Um, synthetic data, which we've just heard about, is really one of the PETS techniques. There are others as well. Um, so we launched this guide in order to encourage uh, industry to adopt it and to also understand which might be the appropriate PET uh, to apply uh, in a given use case or situation. Um, and that mitigates the challenge of not being able to uh, harness and extract insights from data because of uh, concerns about confidentiality uh, or needing to protect the personal information. Mm. And speaking of those concerns as well, are there new dangers emerging when it comes to personal uh, data protection? How can we better protect our personal data in this changing environment? Well, I think it's quite important for companies who have um, data sets, uh, be it personal data or uh, company confidential data, to really go back to the fundamentals. It is about um, backup, encrypt, secure, and tracking uh, of data assets, um, and also timely management of systems. Um, and that those fundamentals are really prepare uh, companies to then leverage on technologies and innovate um, is really about creating that safe space of trust so that companies can take data and use it in the way that uh, will optimize and allow them to innovate, uh, but that also protects uh, the personal information mm. of the public. Yeah, that's more on a smaller scale, I would say. But when we zoom out on a bigger scale, how is Singapore as a country shaping its approach to emerging technologies, especially when it comes to generative AI? Uh, can you outline the national strategy in the works here? Um, so we launched a National AI Strategy 2.0 um, fairly recently. Um, and creating that trusted uh, ecosystem uh, has been very important to create that space for maximal innovation. Uh, one of the key tools that we've been using is actually sandboxes. Um, so we, our minister recently launched the Global AI Assurance Sandbox. And what that allows is for companies to come in um, and to test their Gen AI applications. And what we do is we match them with uh, third party testers. A little bit like how in the sort of financial space you have external or third party auditors. Um, sim similar to that, we invite third party testers to come in and we actually match some of these Gen AI applications with the third party testers. Uh, one example is the Changi General Hospital uh, that tested their summarization tool uh, with a third party tester called SoftServe. Um, and through that, we can quickly learn from the methodologies and insights gained and then share that with others. So we then did that under an AI assurance pilot, uh, which then informs our policies, informs our frameworks. Um, and we've now uh, launched that as a permanent uh, sandbox uh, that allows companies to continue to do that. And that sandbox is now open to other regulators uh, and other applications, other companies who are interested to try this. Um, so the sandboxing approach has allowed us to be agile, to experiment with companies, and then to quickly transfer those learnings um, to other companies to adopt uh, and gain insights from. Yeah, now apart from these sandboxes, are there new skill sets that industries and companies will need to begin to take on more quickly, especially given the concerns around uh, data protection? Uh, I think the answer is definitely yes. Um, so the so field of data protection more traditionally has been about compliance with the legal obligations under PDPA. But with the advent of these new technologies, we do see that um, Companies will need to reach uh, new standards of data protection excellence, but more than that, they need to understand data governance, which is really about how you use data in a responsible way and organize your business processes so that the data can be harnessed for innovation and business uh, even while protecting uh, and being used responsibly. Um, so new skill sets will include understanding technologies better, being able to communicate with different line functions, and also being that bridge to speak to leadership and C-suite in order to explain and translate some of these concerns uh, into real business processes. Mm -hmm. Right, Denise, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing your views with us. I've been speaking with Denise Wong, who is Deputy Commissioner at the Personal Data Protection Commission.